Hey everyone, it's Nancy, the nurse practitioner here with a video for you about skin cancer. Because it's kind of long, I'm going to divide it up into two sections. This one is going to be on basal cell carcinoma and actinic uh, keratosis, which is not a cancer, but it is a precursor to squamous cell um, CA if it's not uh, found early. So uh, before we start um, this first series, and then we'll have a second series, we will go over some of the same things in both. But uh, being that you may come in um, on different ones, I want to make sure you have all the information you need. So because I love the Beatles so much, my husband does not, I am going to sing you a Beatles song, at least the beginning of a part of one. So the one that I love, and this is one of many, is Here Comes the Sun. So. Here comes the sun, da, da 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 Here comes the sun, I say, it's all right. Now the sun could be all right, and we love the sun. It's our source of energy, and without it we would not have life on this planet. But because of our bodies being mostly skin, uh, it is a very big chance of getting, with too much exposure, some sort of skin disorder or skin cancer in our lifetime. As a matter of fact, according to the American Academy of Dermatology, one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime of some kind. And so that's enough to know that you need to really be starting to check your skin as you get older. So I was in my 50s and went for a body check and I had a some, somewhat of a funny mole on my left leg. It was actually excised, taken off. And when, it, when the biopsy came back, it was called dysplastic nevus. And that just meant that the cells were atypical and they were not uh, normal and that I was at risk for other sorts of things like that starting. So luckily I did go. It, it kept me on this path of going once a year and also checking your skin. I was also one of those people who was a sun worshiper as a teenager and I loved, uh, and I had acne, so I went to the dermatologist. And at that point, we all had a um, sun lamp treatments back then, and they used the little pimple poppers. Uh, might be eight, you know, telling you how old I am, but they don't tend to do that anymore. Um, but sun lamps were really um, bad news, and I'm sure it's going to catch up with me now, and um, now that I'm older. But the objectives of this this uh, lecture today is who is at risk for skin cancer. We are going to go over basal cell carcinoma and actinic keratosis. And in the other video that you're going to see, we're going to be going over the ABCDE of melanoma and we'll go over squamous cell carcinoma. And we'll talk about the people of color and how they their skin needs to be checked and what they should do. And in both videos, we will talk about what you can do to prevent uh, skin cancer in your lifetime. So just make sure to join me on all my videos on YouTube at Caregiver Success. So let's get started. We're going to first talk about basal cell carcinoma. And this is a skin cancer that's the most common. And about 70% of the skin cancers in the U.S. are from basal cell. It's very common or can be common in the non-Hispanic white over 65 years of age. More men than women get this type of cancer and usually referred to occupational exposure uh, jobs such as a tree guy like my husband was and he had a basal cell removed from his back um, a couple of years back but also people who work in landscaping or they work for the highway department um, anywhere that you're outside for long periods of time and you're exposed to the sun during the usual days of the sunlight that are the strongest from 10 to 4 you're at risk for this um, too much exposure um, commonly where the sun shines is where basal cell shows up, your head, your neck, your hands. It can be genetic and it can be environmental. It could be from exposure to UV light, family history of skin cancer, tanning beds, PUVA, which is an ultraviolet light for cutaneous disorders, or if you've been on any immune suppressing drugs, something for an organ transplant like a kidney, those drugs tend to reduce your immune system and um, makes you more at risk for skin changes and skin cancer. Also, if you're a fair-skinned person and freckle-faced and blue-eyed and blonde-haired like me and freckles easily, with increasing age, our skin is like an elephant. It never forgets. And so it starts to remember each mole and what it got exposed to and, and some of the skin changes can start to happen. So let's talk about what a basal cell carcinoma is exactly. 
and it's a type of cell that's within our skin and it produce, produces new skin cells as old ones die off. But when you're exposed to the sun um, over and over, the DNA, which is the um, reading part of the cells, gets uh, miscombobulated, should I say, and it causes a, a growth that sometimes is a, a sore that will not heal. Now we're gonna go over some pictures of what a basal cell carcinoma is, so you can kinda of see what you're looking at on your yourself. You know, they're usually pearly, white, skin colored, or they're pink bump. They're usually translucent, which means that they're clear. Um, they can, uh, you can see right through them. Some of them have tiny blood vessels on them, um, called T, T angelicuses, I could never say that word. Um, and some have a brown or blue or, bl or black lesion in them. Some can be flat, scaly, red, or patchy, especially on the back or the chest, and they can grow to be quite large, or they could be white, waxy, scar-like lesion. So you could tell that, you know, we, we're not able to read our skin like a dermatologist is, and it's really important to know that you should get a good dermatological checkup once a year after you hit a certain age or sooner if you've had any family history. So the basal cell carcinoma occurs when one of the skin basal cells develops a mutation to that DNA. We talked about that. And the basal cells sit on the outermost layer of the skin. So it's sitting up on the epidermal layer there. And that's where the new skin cells should be growing and um, coming out. Then they slough off, they push off the old ones, and then the new ones come up. But what happens with basal cell from a mutation of your DNA is uh, the, the carcinoma, it just starts to grow when the old cells just start to prolif proliferate and they don't slough off and it makes this growth. Something that I read along the way as I was going through this research is it also can develop on parts of your body where there is no um, sun hitting it unless you bathe in the nude <laughs> because genitals can have basal cell carcinoma. So you need to look all over your body for any sore that will not heal. And it could be anywhere on the body, even down, down below. <laughs> okay, so it's really important for you to know. Let's take a look at some pictures of um, basal cells. So let's turn the camera around for a minute. And let's look at this one first. This is one on somebody's nose, on the side of their nose. You can see it is kind of a, a you know, papule. It's raised. It's a, it's a, a lump. It doesn't look normal on the skin. It's not bleeding. There are some little blood vessels in it that we were talking about, so that, and it's right where the sun shines. So that is a basal cell carcinoma. Here is another one. Um, this one is on someone's ear. Oops, let me get to it. Where is it? It's right here. Okay, so this one almost looks like a melanoma, and when you see that in our next video, you'll see why. And, and it can be mistaken for that because it looks pretty black. It's, it's pretty um, extensive looking. This one has a lot of pigmentation in it with irregular borders and melanin hues. Melanin is, is the color of our skin. Uh, makes us light or darker depending on how much melanin we have and so this one would really need to be seen by a dermatologist and biopsy to determine whether it is a melanoma or just a basal cell you know which is still an important thing to know here's another one this one is right below somebody's eye here you could see again it's sort of pearly translucent you could see that the borders are kind of raised papular and there's somewhat of a little bit of a center that's defined, um, which you're gonna see when you see squamous cell in the next one, it's very similar looking sometimes. So again, we are not we are not dermatologists. We should never take our time to decide whether or not we should have someone take a look at these things because there, it could be something really bad um, that we thought was nothing and it could have been prevented. So be, some risk factors, just so we should go over that with a basal cell is, as we mentioned, chronic sun exposure. Living in a sunny, high-altitude location can definitely um, cause more problems for um, exposure to severe sunburns, and that increases your risk. Radiation therapy for acne is another one. Fair skin we talked about. Increasing age, but basal cell has been found in younger people, people as of young as uh, 20s and 30s. So it's important that people start looking at their skin at all ages. And we talked about uh, personal or family history, immune suppressing drugs. And another cool thing I came up 
with was arsenic exposure, a toxic metal that's found mostly in the environment increases the risk of basal cell carcinoma and other cancers. Everyone has some arsenic exposure because it occurs um, naturally, but some people may have had a higher exposure if they drink contaminated water or their, jo or their job has uh, arsenic um, or have a job that in involves producing or using arsenic. So that's something really important to know. Um, never knew that. And um, some complications of basal cell carcinoma is a risk of recurrence. It can come back. So that's why you have to kind of go back to the doctor and, and see if it's gone or is it back. An increased risk of other skin cancers. Once you've been told that you have that and it it's recommended that you then uh, go on to um, get it checked regularly and make sure there's no more that's, that are appearing. And cancer that spreads beyond the skin, very rarely um, basal cell carcinoma can spread or metastasize to nearby lymph nodes and other areas of the body like the bones and the lungs. Very rare, but hey, anything's possible when it goes too long and you have not um, dealt with taking care of it for, for, for many, many years. So you don't want to wait when you see something unusual on your skin. Um, for treatment for basal cell carcinoma, it's there's several. You can have surgery, which is the most effective uh, and highest cure rate. Mohs surgery, a lot of us know what Mohs is, uh, which is named after a doctor and has the lowest recurrence rate of all. And radiation is used for those with poor surgical history and have extensive lesions that are quite advanced. So it depends on what situation you're in at that point. And there's also some topical creams that can be used, 5-fluorouracil or interferon, uh, imiquimod, and um, they're used to reduce the tumor growth on superficial basal cell carcinomas. So um, you certainly should check out the American Academy of uh, Dermatology.org for pictures and uh, some other information that I may not have covered. And before we go into prevention, let's go into another type of um, skin cancer, not skin cancer, but skin disorder, and it's called actinic keratosis, or AK. And it's called solar keratosis. Solar is the sun from years of sun exposure, and it can turn into squamous cell carcinoma. So it's kind of important to, even though it's not cancerous, it can turn. So you need to have your skin checked if you see something funky on your skin. Even as early as 40, people have been found to have that. So the appearance of actinic keratosis, or AK we'll call it, is scaly, dry, and rough skin. It's textured, it feels like sandpaper, and it can cover large areas. And you see, I would more or less think, wow, maybe it's um, some kind of eczema or something. But you gotta make sure that you uh, have that checked. Or red bumps, thick red scaly patches or growths, or crusted growths from red, brown, or yellowish to black. And who's at risk? Fair skin, blonde or red, red hair, blue-eyed, uh, hazel-eyed skin that freckles. Same deal as we saw before, and they could form. They form typically on areas where the sun shines: um, face, scalp, neck, trunk, lips. Actually, lower lips, which is kind of important to know. Um, ears, neck, and back hands, back of the hands, arms, and lower legs, especially in women, the lower legs. And I should just show you some pictures, or I have one one picture, it's not too good, but this is what AK looks like on somebody's neck. Uh, kind of looks like this. I know it's not a great picture, but this is a nose. See, there's the nostrils. We'll move up a little. And there's those little patchy areas. You see how it's uh, kind of irregularly shaped? It looks almost like it's, it looks dry and sandpapery. So it, it just appears where the sun is. And um, so I uh, want to make sure that we have that looked at as well. So treatment for um, AK is cryotherapy or some kind of close monitoring to just see what it's going to do. The other thing would be chemical peels or laser skin resurfacing or photodynamic therapy. So these are pretty uh, big tests and, and treatments and um, would need to be done in a dermatology office. You need to check your skin for bleeding or for itching growth that becomes thicker, it remains after the treatment was done, or it changes in size, shape, or color. Okay, one of these things that I've gotten along the way of looking for research from my YouTube videos are brochures, and this I actually got from my dermatologist's office. 
it was actually from the American Academy of Dermatology. You can actually get them in your in your dermatology office, which is what I did, and I stole a few. <laughs> I stole this one on AK. You know, it showed pictures of what it looks like on your scalp or what it looks like on your hands and what to do. And I love this because it's very bulleted and clear and uh, you could keep it at home and, and you could read it over to learn information. It's, so these are really good to have. So let's take a few minutes and talk about prevention. Prevention is big. First of all, do you like my hat? This is a great hat. It's a um, Sombra hat uh, or one of the companies that actually has... Um, sun protection on them it has a back to it so it covers my neck a little bit it covers around my face so it's like i have my own umbrella and one of the things to do when you've had any exposure to uh, and had uh, any kind of skin cancer is to protect your skin with protective clothing and um, baseball caps are cool but they don't cover men's necks and you can see they get pretty oops here comes the wind it's blowing all my stuff um, it, can, it can cause you to get a lot of sunburn on the back of your neck so uh, wear protective clothing, you need to wear long, long sleeve shirts, you could wear light colored shirts, you can wear pants, you know, anything like that is important to do. Sunscreen all year round if you're, if you're living in a place where there's sun and if there's sand or snow, any reflective stuff, you need to wear sunscreen. And on cloudy days, it's important to wear sunscreen. Now, all sunscreen's not the same. A broad spectrum sunscreen is what you need to get and what broad spectrum means is it covers UVA and UVB rays. So I got a couple here to show you. Here's some stuff called no ad. Love this. It's a broad spectrum. It's quick absorption and it's water resistant for 80 minutes and it tells you that on it. So you know in 80 minutes if you sweat, if you swim, if you um, or even if you don't do those things you need to replace this uh, again within 80 minutes. And, and that's as long as it will last. So you need to have this handy and be ready. Also, before you leave the house, you should put it on so 15 to 30 minutes so it absorbs in so that you're protected from the sun. Because if you put it on and then you go outside, it's not good right away. So you can get sunburn for that first 30 minutes. All right. Um, let's see what else we have. I have some stuff for the lips. Uh, I just got this. This is 50 SPF. Well, now that we know a basal cell can happen on the lips, really important to cover your lips as well. And a shot glass is what they say. You put, either fill up your hand, your palm of your hand, with um, sunscreen or fill up a shot glass. And this is how much you should use on your entire body. <laughs> so if you fill up your hand, that's how much you're supposed to really slather everywhere, face, lips, neck, anywhere where you're exposed. And then you'll know you've done enough. And the important thing, too, is to avoid the sun if you can between 10 and 4, but of course that's the time of day we really love. So if you can get to shade, it, it, the more you can, the better. Keep yourself covered with protective clothing. And, um, and don't forget sunglasses. Sunglasses need to, to be protected from both UVA and UVB sun rays. Uh, my mother-in-law found out she has melanoma of the eye, and she has very light blue eyes. And after years of boating and being in reflective waters for years, it's probably been related to that. Um, she didn't wear sunglasses. That was back in the 50s and 60s, and we know a lot more now. So we're in the middle of that for her. Um, also avoid tanning beds. Tanning beds are just trouble. As much as we like them, they're, they're not good for us. And check your skin regularly. You know, get yourself a mirror. Like this one's not great because it's on a stand. But if you had a handheld mirror or a long wall mirror, you know, stand there in your skivvies, you know, <laughs> uh, in good light and look all over your skin from head to toe. If you have a partner or someone who could check for you, have them look at the back of your head, behind your ears, behind your neck. Look at your back for you. Look at the back of your legs and your scalp. You know, a hairdresser or a barber is great because they can look between your hair scalp, tell you if there's something up with your skin, and they're the best person back there to tell you that. Um, very important to do that. And um, another important thing to remember is look at your toes and between your toes and the bottoms of your feet. And don't forget to check the genital area and your buttocks. So it really is a full, a full body check um, that you need to do. And some stuff I got off the American Academy of, of um, 
of dermatology site was a few things I'm going to put on my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash caregiver success. Let me show you these. This one's really cool. You may not see it too well because the wind's blowing, but I'm going to put it on there for you to actually print. It tells you what to do, which I just said about the clothes and the, um, the tanning beds and all the things you should avoid and do properly and who to call and how to find a dermatologist. And this one is about how to find the sunscreen and you know about the shot glass just kind of a fun fun thing to have to show your kids for instance so that they know uh, what what they should do or, or people that you you take care of and that's going to be on my facebook.com forward slash caregiver success page um great site the let me tell you, just so we don't forget, there is actually a site, and it's called um, dot dot dot. Um, I think I'll get into it in my next video, which is on melanoma and squamous cell carcinoma. And by the way, just so you, if in case you didn't know, all this information and many of it, well, not all of it, but some of it is in my book, Caregiver Success, which you can get on Amazon or on my. Um, my website at caregiversuccess.com talks all about skin care. So please look into getting one of those for yourself and your parents. And so I think it's talked enough uh, for now. I just want to make sure that you're safe out there. This is a series one of two videos for you on skin cancer, and it'll be followed with the other one shortly. And um, as I mentioned, so have a great day. Have fun in the sun. Just be safe. Take care from Nancy, the nurse practitioner. Bye.